بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So we're still talking about some of the different words in the Quran. All right. And he mentioned, as we, uh, and he mentions here, that there are seven types. We stopped at the third type, which is Al-Majaz. And Al-Majaz is an advanced Mabhath, advanced area of research. Because, to be honest, for us to deeply discuss Al-Majaz, which is one of the hotly debated issues between the scholars, uh, we're going to have to have a good background of Arabic. All right, but we'll give you guys a picture of what al-majaz is. What is al-majaz? First of all, what is al-majaz in Arabic? Arabic, in uh, basically, al-majaz is is uh, is a figurative speech, and uh, figurative speech in Arabic. All right, that's what al-majaz is. All right, um, and it's usually studied in al-balagha, which is Arabic rhetoric, al-balagha. It's also studied in Usul al-Fiqh, legal theory. And inshallah we will study Usul al-Fiqh soon. Also in Ulum al-Quran. Also in Ulum al-Quran. And one example of this that they use in Arabic is the word al-Asad. Al-Asad in Arabic means what? Lion. Right? Al-Asad means lion. But how do you use, it, how do you use lion figuratively in Arabic? For example, in Arabic they will say رَأَيْتُ أَسَدًا يَخْطُبْ I seen a lion giving a khutbah. Does he mean literally a physical, a real lion? Or no? What does it mean? Like the khatib is a beast, right? It's a beast. A beast is, is, is figurative too. A beast is literally when somebody's a beast in something. He's not really a beast, but a beast in what he does. So that's al-majaz for you, but in Arabic, okay? And here he mentions all the different types of majaz, all right? Al-majaz, all right? So ikhtisar, first word here, ikhtisar is a type of majaz. Ikhtisar meaning a summary. Hadf meaning something that is taken out, all right? And each one has its own, has its own meaning. We won't go deep into it because... Uh, for us to really understand each every single term every single part of al-majaz we're going to have to know arabic but what is the hotly debated you know issue between the scholars concerning al-majaz well there are a group of scholars albeit a mi minority that say there is no majaz in the arabic language there is no majaz in the arabic language all right from them is abu abdullah Ibn Hamid, who's from the early Hanabila, and Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, and his student Ibn Al-Qayyim, and from the contemporaries, Shaykh Shuyukhina, al Shaykh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti, rahimahullah ta'ala, Shaykh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti. In fact, he has a whole book called Man'u Jawaz Al-Majaz, right? Uh, and Shaykh Ibn Uthameen. All right, all of these scholars they say, although they're a minority, they say there is no such thing as majaz in the Arabic language. Some others, though, they say there is majaz in the Arabic language, but there is no majaz in the Quran. You won't find majaz in the Quran. All right, but the majority of scholars they say there is majaz in the Quran and there is majaz in the Arabic language, and it is the correct opinion. All right. The question arises, why did some of the scholars say there is no majaz in the Qur'an? The reason why, the main reason why, is because some of the innovators, like the Mu'tazila, like the Mu'tazila, the Mu'tazila are a group that came about during uh, the time of the Tabi'een. Alright? A man by the name of Wasil ibn Ata' was one of the students of Al-Hasan al-Basri. Al-Hasan al-Basri is one of the top tabi'een. All right, he passed away in the year 110 after the Hijrah. Al-Hasan al-Basri, he studied under, a nu under numerous of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu like Anas ibn Malik and others. All right. One of his students, Wasi ibn Ata, right, he left his session. 
he stopped becoming يعني, one of the students of Al Hasan al Basri because he differed with them in issues regarding to creed and i'tiqad and theology. All right, and because he left this majlis, he left his uh, session, they were known as the Mu'tazila, those who left. Okay, so Wasir bin Atta, what did he believe in the Mu'tazila? They have a lot of beliefs, they believe that the Quran is created. They believe that there is no such thing as Qadr that Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know yani, uh, what he decreed or doesn't decree they have a difference of opinion between them they believe that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani, all of his sifat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no attributes Allah cannot see, cannot hear um, uh, many, yani, many innovations the Mu'tazila they always use the majaz. Whenever an ayah would come about, they believe that Allah, uh, yani, that Musa never spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although it clearly mentions in the Quran. So what do, we, what, what do they do in the ayah to the Quran? What do they do to these explicit verses in the Quran? What they do is they use majaz. They always use majaz as an excuse. So, for example, yeah, for mention example, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly spoke to Musa alayhi salam and say Allah did not speak to Musa they try to use figurative speech they'll say no Allah did not speak to Musa rather did something else for example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high up above his throne ar-Rahmanu ala arsh istawa they'll say no it doesn't mean that it means istawla and, and istawla meaning you know you uh, uh, basically you you take over in terms of power. The point is, they use the majaz for everything that goes along with their beliefs. And this led Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah and Ibn Al-Qayyim and some of these scholars to deny majaz altogether. All right? In fact, Ibn Al-Qayyim, he went as far as saying that Al-Majaz is, al is Taghut, is a Taghut. That's how far, yani, in his book, al sawaiq Al-Mursala, Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says that Majaz is a Taghut. Taghut meaning what? What does Taghut mean? Falsehood. Huh? Falsehood, but it's like one of the any, uh, um, any, uh, high level of falsehood, right? Anything that is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With Ibn Qayyim's definition, his famous definition of a Taghut. Anything that is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that is followed other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The point is, this is what led them to do uh, to deny al-majaz in Arabic and in Quran. But if you look in the Quran, we find many examples of majaz. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةِ وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةِ وَاسْأَلِ means ask. And al-qarya means the village. Right? Can you talk to the village or the, yani, the buildings of a village? Can you talk? Can you physically talk to them? You can't. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean here? The people of the village. The people who live in the village, right? Or people who live in the city. People who live in those buildings. So the word ahl was taken out. This is a form of majaz. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also says in Surah Al-Kahf. What does He say? Jidaran yuridu an yanqad. In the, in the famous story, that occurred between Musa and Khidr. The story that happened between Musa and Khidr. Alright? And Musa, Khidr gave Musa three chances and he told him, don't ask me anything. Alright? And the third time, what happened? The third time. Can anybody know the story of Musa? Alayhi salam? And Musa and Khidr? Can anybody tell me that story? I'm pretty sure some of you guys know the story. You want to tell me the story? Yeah. Uh, Musa alayhi salam. What's it called? Uh, he and his slave went on a journey. Okay. And they had a fish in a basket for lunch. Okay. So when they arrested, yeah, the, the fish left in the basket for like, they, were, they, were, they arrested at like a river spot. And the fish left at a, it went out of the basket. Okay. And then uh, they went on to their journey and they stopped the rest. Mm -hmm. And then Musa asked his slave to bring the, uh, to bring their, their, their lunch. Okay. And then he looked and the fish was gone. Okay. That the shaitan was the one that made me forget. Alright. And they retraced, when they retraced their steps to, the, to where they were, they found Khidr there. Okay. And uh, Musa asked to accompany him. Mm -hmm. And Khidr said that, 
you will not have patience with me. And then Musa alayhi salam says, uh, yeah. He insisted. Yeah, he insisted basically. And then they went, <coughs> he, uh, he accompanied him. And Khidr asked him not to ask him anything. Yes. They accompanied him until they went on, to, uh, they went on a boat. And then uh, Khidr, he, uh, he drilled a hole into the boat. Okay. And Musa is like, why are you doing this? Yeah, why are you doing that? And he said, I told you not to ask me. And he said, don't blame me for what I forgot. Okay. And then they went along until they found a boy. Okay. A widow, and they and Khidr killed him. Okay. And Musa is like, why would you do this? Why would you kill an innocent soul? Yeah. Okay. And then Khidr said, I told you not to ask me again. And okay. Like, and then Musa said, if I, uh, said, he said, if I ask you something else, then if I ask you one more thing, then uh, I will not accompany you anymore. Okay. And then they went to a village, uh, and they asked the village to, uh, yeah, to give them a dwelling and some food, travelers, mm -hmm. and they refused. And then Khidr, he found a wall that was broken, and uh, he rebuilt the wall. And Musa alayhi salam asked him, why, why would you do that? They refused us uh, host the hospitality, and you, uh, you could have asked for money to build that wall back up for them. And then Khidr alayhi salam, he told him, told him, this is the Tiraq Baini wa Bainik. So, when the Bioka? Tawili Mara Tasta Ali and Sabra. Ayo. And then? And then he told him that the boat. Fast forward to the third one so we can save time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He said that the third one, it belonged to some orphan boys. Okay. And their dad was a, a righteous man. Alright. And uh, under the wall, there was a treasure for them. Okay. So he built up the wall. The wall, the wall was about to what? The, to fall down. The wall was about to fall down. This is where I'm trying to get to. Jidaran yuridu an yanqabd. The wall was about to fall down. That's the, that's the figurative explanation. But literally, if we take it literally, literally, what does the ayah say? The wall wants to fall down. And does a wall have, does a wall have will? No, it doesn't have will like human beings can't want anything he's either it either breaks down or stays up all right it's it doesn't have a soul right but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he uses what he used figurative speech here this is another example of majaz and there are many examples of majaz in the Quran one of our mashayikh his name is Abdul Mahsin al-Askar he has a whole treatise uh, responding to those that do inkar that deny al-majaz it's printed in one volume by Darul Minhaj. Very good book. Um, uh, for those of you interested, you can check it out. Tayyib, Al Majaz. So here he mentions many different types of Al Majaz. Ikhtisar, Hadf, Tarku Khabari, Mufrad. Right? Wa Muthanna, Wa Jam'a, An Ba'diha. Wa Jam'a, An Ba'diha is like when you use a plural word to describe something that is one. Okay? Yani use plural to describe something that is one. Alright? So here an example that Imam Sayyid in Rahimullah gives is the ayah in Surah Al Asr. Allah says, In al insan alafi khusr that verily the human being is in loss. That verily the human being is in loss. Or human or mankind is in loss. Alright? This is an example of a plural meant by yani, that is used for one person. Alright. Uh takrir. Takrir, repeating, repetition, is a majaz as well. And we, we, we see this in the Quran a lot. Al Qari'ah, Mal Qari'ah, Kalla Sayyalamun, Thumma Kalla Sayyalamun, Al Haqa, Mal Haqa. Scholars include this as a type of majaz. Taqdeem, Taqheer, Sabab. I mean, we won't go too deep because this has more to do with Arabic rhetoric than it has to do with Ulum al Quran. And for us to really delve into majaz and understand its uh, realities. We have to have a good base of, of Arabic. All right. The fourth type, al rabi' is al mushtarak, al mushtarak, and al mushtarak means a word that has multiple meanings, two or more meanings. All right. A word in the Quran that has more than two meanings. All right. Al mushtarak. Okay. So the first one he gives here is al qur, or al qar. All right. Al-Qar is mentioned in which surah? It's mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
discuss the ahkam, the rules of divorce. He says to the uh, to the ones that are divorced, they have to wait. To the females that are divorced, they have to wait. Thalathataquru. And quru is the plural of the word qar. Alright? And it has two meanings. One meaning is when a woman is in her monthly period. The other meaning is when she's not in her monthly period. Complete opposites. Complete what? Complete opposites. And that's why the scholars, they differed in the meaning of this ayah. In the meaning of this ayah, they differed. Because it has two meanings in the Arabic language. It could mean when a woman is in her monthly period, and it can mean when she's not in her monthly period, when she's pure. Okay? Al-Qur. 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 Alright? Wa-Wayl. Wayl. Wayl. There are only two surahs in the Quran that start with Wayl. Waylu lil mutafifin And Waylu li kulli humazatil lumazah. Waylul Mutafifin discusses the wealth of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woo unto those who take advantage of the wealth of people. Right? And Waylul Kulli Humazatil Lumaza discusses the honor of people. Waylul Kulli Humazatil Lumaza. Alright? But it has it has two meanings. The first one is Woo unto a person. I yani, uh, let punishment be upon that person. And the second meaning is that it is a valley in Jahannam, in hellfire. And this is what the Prophet Wasallam he mentioned to us that Wail is a valley in Jahannam. In the hadith that is collected by Imam Al-Tirmidhi, hadith of Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala an, wa ardah. So Wail has two meanings. One is that it's a valley in Jahannam. And second, woo onto a person. When nid And nid has two meanings in the Quran as well. The first meaning is... Al-Mithil The same Somebody who's a counterpart The same thing Right فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا Allah says in the Quran Do not give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Do not make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Do not give him partners And dada is the Is the plural of the word nid And the second meaning Is Is what? Al-Did Al-Did meaning the opposite so a nid in the in, in the Quran it could come to mean the opposite of something. Alright? What tawab? A tawab. A tawab, as we know, is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who repents. But it also can be a characteristic of a human being, the one who constantly repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this context it has two meanings. A tawab, the one who repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the second meaning is the slave who repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants repentance to his his slaves. And the slave is the one who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance. Al-Mawla. Al-Mawla has two meanings. Al-Mawla could be this master and it could be the slave. It could be the master and it could be the what? It could be the slave. Al-Ghi. Al-Ghi. Al-Ghi also has two meanings. The first meaning is that it is hellfire. As Allah says in the Quran, فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ Alright? This means hellfire. As Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, he explained, as narrated by Imam al-Hakim. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an is one of the scholars of the Sahaba. He is from the Mufassirun of the Sahaba, as we mentioned. And the scholars of Tafsir from the Sahaba. All right. Uh, the second meaning is anything that is the opposite of of uh, a rushd, and a rushd meaning somebody who is mature, is somebody who is responsible. All right. Wara, wara has two meanings in the Arabic language. It could mean back behind somebody, and it could mean in front of somebody. It can mean behind somebody. It can mean in front of somebody. All right. The aforementioned story of Musa and Khidr. Right? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا Alright? In the first part of the story, alright, when he messed up the ship, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ In front of them was a king that takes what? That takes every ship by force. 
So wara here does not mean back, it means in front. And it can also mean the back. It has two meanings in the Quran. Al Mudari. Al Mudari. For those of you that have studied the Arabic language, Al Mudari has there's something called Al Fi'l Mudari, right? The present verb. But Al Mudari in Arabic has two meanings. One is the present tense, and the second is future tense. Alright? Although commonly it's used for the present tense, it could be used for the future as well. That is the Al uh, Mushtarak. And there are many other words in the Arabic language that have يعني, uh, multiple meanings. For example, um, When the night comes in, or when the night departs. When the night comes in, when the night departs. As as can mean both both meanings. When the night comes in and when the night leaves. All right. For example, the word al ain, al ain, they say has more than about twenty meanings in Arabic. Twenty different meanings. Al ain. All right. You have the letter ain. You have al ain, the little spring water. You have al ain, the spy. You have al ain, the eye. All right. Up to twenty meanings. All right. طيب. Let's move on to the fifth type, Al-Khamis, Al-Mutaradif. Al-Mutaradif meaning synonyms. Al-Mutaradif meaning synonyms. And this is a, uh, there is a difference of opinion between the scholars of Arabic. Is there, are there any Mutaradif words? Are there any true words that are synonyms? Right? In Arabic? Are there any synonyms? Two opinions according to the Arabic, Arabic scholars. Some of them they say there is no mutaradif in Arabic. Every meaning, every two meanings, every two words that are similar, they must have a slight, even if it's a slight difference. Okay? Even if it's a slight difference, they must have different meanings. Alright? And some of them they say no, there is mutaradif. There are words that have the same exact meanings. So here he gives an example Al Insan al Bashar. Al insan and al bashar. They both mean what? They both mean human beings. Al insan and al bashar. They both mean human beings. All right. But some scholars they say no. There's a slight difference between both. Naam, the origin of both means the same, but there's a slight difference between both. And Abu Hilal al Askari, a fourth century scholar in Arabic and Hadith, he has a whole book called Al Furuq that's printed in one volume. He brings all of these synonyms in the Arabic language together and he mentions, mentions the slight differences between each word. Alright? So, Al Insan al Bashar, he mentioned a slight, diff uh, the slight, a slight difference between both. Al Haraj and Al Diq. Al Haraj Al Diq is when you're, when you're cornered and you're put into a you know, difficult situation. Al Haraj and Al Diq. Alright? Al Meem and Al Bahar. Al Meem and Al Bahar, they both mean the sea. Alright? Al Rajas Wal Rijis Wal Adab all of these all of these three words are mentioned in the Quran. They all have the same meaning. They all mean punishment. They all mean punishment. So Al Mutaradif synonyms. Synonyms in the in the Arabic language and specifically in the Quran. Okay? Tayyib. Number six Al Istiara. Al Istiara. Al Istiara like Al-Majaz is studied in Arabic rhetoric, in Al-Balagha, alright? And Al-Isti'ara, in a nutshell, is a metaphor, alright? Is a metaphor. That's what Al-Isti'ara is, alright? And he gives an example here in the Qur'an, an example of a metaphor in the Qur'an. He says, he says here, أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ In Surah Al-An'am, أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي الناس. كَمَنْ مَثَلُهُ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِّنْهَا uh, In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا Those that were dead, فَأَحْيَيْنَهُ Then we gave them life. The scholars of tafsir, they say, alright, these people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them life were not physically dead. They were not dead. But their souls were dead. They weren't alive with their souls. Meaning, they were engulfed and engrossed in sins and they did not use to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it is as if they were dead. And when we gave them guidance, they became what? They, they, got, they became alive. 
So this is the type of metaphor that is used that is used uh, in the Quran. Okay. So al isti'ara means what? A metaphor. So al isti'ara is used commonly in the Quran and obviously in the Arabic language. The seventh type is at tashbih. At tashbih. And at tashbih is a simile. All right. When you compare it to something. All right. When you compare it to something else. All right. Like this. All right. And here he mentions amthilatuhu kathira. There are so many examples in the Quran. And use they usually use the word kaf. They usually use the word kaf. All right. To denote a simile. Whenever you use the word, you see the letter kaf. Okay. There's a good chance that it means a, there's a simile involved. All right. Um, uh, there are many, many examples in the Quran in the Arabic language of of a simile. All right. So these seven types: al gharib the strange words, al muarrab those words that became that became uh, that that are originally non-Arabic then became Arabic. All right. Al majaz figurative speech. Al mushtarak words that have multiple meanings. Al mutaradif uh, words that are synonyms. Al isti'ara metaphors. And a tashbih, similes, all seven of these types uh, are different types of words used in the Quran. Okay? And this is a very important, this is a very important chapter in Usul in Ulum al Quran and Usul al Tafsir. Why? Because the meaning can drastically change. Alright? If you don't, for example, if you don't have majaz and you take by it literally, then the meaning can change, right? Uh, for example, if you don't know what strange words, these strange words, not common, any uncommon words, if you don't know what they mean, you might understand it differently, right? Okay? If you don't know the difference between uh, uh, the words that have multiple meanings, you don't know which one to use, there could be, a, right? There could be a different, uh, any, uh, could affect its tafsir, for example, al qar because there's a difference of opinion between scholars what al qar means in this context. All right, all right. Uh, they understood the ayah differently. So, for example, the Malikis and the Shafi'is, they say that this means, yani al qar or al qaru in this ayah means when she's on her monthly period, and the Hanafis and the Hanbalis they disagree. They say no, when she's not on her monthly period. Okay, so you see the difference that it carries in the meaning. So it's a it's a very important bab for somebody who is studying tafsir to understand. All right, uh, any any this is just a you know obviously it's a beginning text. Uh, each each of these you know each of these uh, each of these uh, different words or different uh, categories. There have been books written about it, right? But this is just to, you know, just to understand the meanings of it, and you know, uh, one or two examples were were given. Inshallah, we will stop there, and uh, we will continue bi nala azza wa jal next week. Um, wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.